Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox. I hope you're having an amazing day so far. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a different one. I actually really wanted to dive into a very specific topic, which I've kind of touched on in the past in videos before, where I've talked about room makeovers and kind of talked about my process for how I design a room from start to finish, like the process that I personally use. I feel like everyone's a little bit different. Some people like to start with a color palette, a mood board, whatever it might be. I wanted to share with you guys my process that I use for every single room um, and how I basically come up with my design and my ideas, my color palette, my story, and just create a very cohesive and nicely designed space. I figured this video would come at the perfect time because as many of you guys know, I just moved into a brand new apartment and I'm going to be doing a ton of room makeovers in here. So yeah, I hope that this video is super helpful and I did want to also give a humongous shout out to Alexandra Gator because I saw her do this video and then I had already been planning on this for such a long time. I just never got around to doing it and I saw her do it and it really motivated me to do this video as well. I feel like everyone kind of does have a different way that they like to take on a room design. So if you guys would like to check out Alexandra Gator's video, I'm going to put it in a card up here and also link it below for you guys. Alrighty, so I guess we're jumping in to my first little step in my designing a room process. And my first step always is to just kind of look at the space you're going to be designing and create a mood board. This is my biggest, biggest thing that I do for every single space. I'm a humongous Pinterest addict. And I know that now you can also bookmark on Instagram as well, which has become super convenient. I save honestly anything from headboards to color palettes to maybe random pictures of textures that can be converted into some form of art print or redesigned into a DIY project. I save a ton of different inspiration images on my Pinterest boards, which I can then go back to and refer to later when I am going to design a space. I personally feel like creating a new board for the bedroom or whatever room it is you're going to design in your space and just titling the name of that room and then going through Pinterest and just looking for images and pinning whatever sparks creativity. Like if you see something you like, go Go ahead and pin it. It doesn't have to be cohesive with anything else, but just pin all your thoughts and pin all of the things that you really do love into one board. Even though it might be a huge mismatch of randomness, that's great because it's an amazing starting point for you to go through and kind of edit your board. So you're able to go through and take away or even add to what you already have. I feel like a lot of people have a hard time with mood boards because maybe they start creating a mood board, but it's leaning in a ton of different directions, which kind of can create a very scattered space in the end. Like for example, if you're pinning a ton of modern images, images, then you're pinning a lot of rustic images, and you're doing like farmhouse images, and then you're doing classic images. Sometimes those styles don't mesh well if you're doing multiple, so I find it's best to pin everything you like onto your one board, and then go through and edit, and kind of take away maybe what is a little bit too much, and try to refine the idea a little bit more. I find that that just works a little bit better for me, because I love seeing everything in one spot that I like, and then going through and refining things I don't really like, and adding to what I do like to create a more polished, and then like cohesive aesthetic for the room I'm going to be designing. Step number two kind of just goes back to exactly what I said, and that is narrowing down and defining your board. So this comes to anything from furniture ideas, wall paint colors, um, wallpaper ideas, rug ideas, curtain ideas, decor ideas, whatever it might be. Even like layout ideas are great. There's just a ton of different home decor resources on Pinterest. I kind of like to find one image that I really, really want to use for a space. So let's just say there's one image that really inspires me. I like a lot of the pieces in there. I like a lot of the woods. I like the textures. I like the furniture, the wall color, whatever it might be. I find one image. And then once you click on that, it's actually really nice because Pinterest kind of recommends a ton of other options underneath that are a similar style. So I find that to be super helpful. If you scroll down from the um, original photo, you could find lots of other sort of images that look similar or add a similar vibe. And I like to go off of that. And once you start clicking around, you could find stuff in the same color palette. You could find curtains. You could find rug ideas ideas, tons of different things and pin them all to your board, go back, edit your board, and you should have a more consolidated and concise, like look at what maybe you want your new space to look like. So I find that curtain and rugs are the hardest part of any room. I don't know if that's just me, but personally, curtains and rugs are just so challenging because they really are so focal. When you walk in a room, the rug is honestly sometimes the first thing you see. It's the largest thing that kind of covers the floor and curtains are just on the entire wall, especially in a room like the one that I have right now. And I get asked all the time, how do I choose curtains and how do I choose rugs? Again, guys, I am not an interior designer, so this might not be the most perfect method, but the method that I personally use, which I find works pretty well, is to see, first of all, for curtains, how many windows are in the room. So for example, my bedroom has four windows, which is quite a lot of windows to actually cover. There's actually five because there's one in the little 
nook area over there, but I'm not going to cover that one. So I'm doing four windows. And I find that if you have more than two windows, trying to stick to a solid color curtain just works a little bit better. I personally just always lean towards more like linen-y or gauzy materials. I'm not a huge fan of like blackout or like super heavy cotton fabrics or velvet. I don't know what it is. I just like a more lightweight, airy feel when it comes to windows because I feel like that's what they portray anyways. But let's just say you have one window in your bedroom, like my last window. I think adding a really fun maybe statement curtain or a pop, let's say you have a white wall, an easy way to add interest to that wall is just adding a more fun curtain to the space. So choosing from your color palette that you created in your mood board, maybe drawing some of the key colors that you really like. And then when you're out searching for curtains, you can kind of pull from the color palette and see if there's any curtains that maybe have bits of those accent colors in them. And now for rugs, rugs are the most challenging for me. I don't know what it is, but something I typically like to lean towards is something that is super subtle or super bold. Nothing in between. I don't know what it is. I just like one or the other. So for example, when I did Bretman's apartment makeover, I ordered a couple different rugs because I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to like. And I ordered these from Rugs USA. Actually, the one I ended up using was from West Elm, but the West Elm one was more of a bold choice. It had colors of teal and like emerald and like a soft blue. So that one was a little bit more bold. And I ended up going with that because the space overall was just bold to start with. It had the crazy wallpaper, a velvet couch. So that space was a little bit different than a traditional kind of space that I would design. But then for Bretman's bedroom, I actually ended up opting for something a little bit more simple. It had a really, really basic kind of like pattern in it. That was a black pattern, adding a little bit of detail, but I pulled those colors from the more simplistic, calm color palette I was using in his bedroom. So I think if you are to do some form of rug, either choose one that is super neutral, that can kind of pair nicely with the color palette you have in terms of accent colors, or if you really want to go bold, choose one of those accent colors and make sure it's really implemented in the rug. At least 50% of the rug kind of incorporates that accent color in there to really make it shine. And then you can find it in other places in the room as well. Something that I learned in high school that is kind of stuck with thirds. And this is something that I now keep in mind when I design any space. And that is to, let's just say, for example, you had an accent rug that you got and you love it. And it has a lot of different colors in it. But one of the main colors in that rug is yellow. It's really prominent in the rug, let's say. Something that you can do is to place two other yellow accent pieces throughout the room to pull back to that rug. So maybe a art print on the wall and a vase on the shelf. I think if you're one that struggles with kind of creating a cohesive design, using the rule of thirds method is kind of like a no brainer, easy way to do so. And this is not me saying that you are not allowed to have one pink vase over there and nothing else pink the room. You could do that for sure. But I feel like a no brainer method for maybe somebody who doesn't know exactly how they want to decorate their space or how to add accent colors. Um, a rule of thirds is a great way just to kind of keep that in mind in the back of your head when you're shopping like you could find three pieces of similar colors place them around the room and it just makes it feel a little bit more cohesive than if you just had one random off color thrown in the corner for example you're able to pair it back with things and it just looks a little bit more finished and polished next up we're going to talk about paint and wallpaper which can kind of lean important or not important depending on the space you want to design i know when i first started kind of like decorating my room i always just loved white walls and i still do love white walls in my room right now all of the walls are white and I'm honestly not too sure if I'm going to paint them in here. I haven't decided yet. So that's definitely like something I want to think about in the future, of course, when I go to design the space. But paint and wallpaper can change up a space so, so much. And if you think about it like this, when you walk into someone's bedroom or you walk into someone's living room, whatever it might be, if you see a painted wall in their room, like an accent wall, or you see like a painted section in their room, it just already looks like they added so much time and they tried to make it look a little bit more personalized and like their self. I like to do when I'm choosing paint color for a space is really think about the overall vibe I want the room to portray. You can have a lot of different vibes. There can be a light and airy feeling. You can have more of a moody, dramatic feeling. You could have like a warm and cozy feeling. You can have a super modern and minimal feeling. There's a ton of different aesthetics that you can go for. This is another great way to go back to your mood board and kind of look at the pictures and see what space you could imagine yourself living in. What vibe do you want to feel every single day? Do you want to walk in your room and do you want it to have like a moody vibe? Or do you want to walk in your room and have it be very fresh and light and bright? So there's a lot of different methods. Methods, and with those methods is how you should choose your paint color because if you're wanting a super fresh and light and airy vibe, you're not going to want to choose
choose any super dark colors and vice versa if you're wanting something super moody you're not going to want to choose like you know super white walls it's not going to give you that moody vibe so i feel like definitely pinpointing the vibe and like feeling internal feeling you want to feel when you walk into a space is how you should choose your paint color and kind of go from there and i feel like sometimes a lot of people struggle with this because they don't want to paint but they want a specific vibe but the thing that they need to do to achieve that vibe is to add a painted wall because painted walls can really really just enhance what you've already done to your space so so much peel and stick wallpaper is also a great alternative for anybody who is wanting to be a hundred percent renter friendly because you could stick it up on your wall and peel it off when you leave and you are good to go and it comes in a ton of different patterns colors styles it's really great to add visual interest to your space with wallpaper i really really love wallpaper i'm even considering it for my own bedroom peel and stick for me is always the way to go i'm never gonna like glue wallpaper on my wall like absolutely not i'm sorry so there are options of course so kind of consider which one weighs out and maybe fits your space the best all right, so let's talk about furniture now. Now, furniture is something that is kind of a little bit challenging because there are so many different styles of furniture. There are so many different finishes of furniture, types of furniture, silhouettes of furniture, and there's also so many different prices of furniture, which everyone knows furniture is not always cheap. So I wanna give you guys kind of two methods for furniture, and these are definitely more of like a beginner method. So if you're somebody that doesn't maybe have a super keen design eye, for example, which is not me saying that you don't, you watching right there um but let's just say for example maybe you don't you you really don't have a great design eye something i think that you should keep in mind is for your space if you are doing like a lot of different furniture pieces try to keep them in the same tone or the same color family for example if you are doing a wooden bed with a wooden dresser with wooden nightstands try to keep all those wood tones in the same family and don't do a light wood bed with a medium wood dresser with dark nightstands like it kind of makes it look like each piece was almost like a hand-me-down or just wasn't thought about so something that you can do to fix this method is to upcycle your pieces and i have a ton of tutorials on my channel on upcycling furniture from painting dressers to upcycling ikea pieces whatever it might be there are a ton of different methods to either repaint furniture, refinish them, sand them, restain them. So for example, in my bedroom, in my past apartment, something that I did was I tried to keep the wood tones very similar. So the wood tone of my bed was pretty similar to the wood tone of my dresser and then also kind of matched back to the wood tone of my second dresser, which I had to have for all my DIY supplies. And then the main accent color of metal was black. So I spray painted the lid on my desk black which then corresponded back to my black um clothing rack and then i also made sure that my curtain rod and my mirror frame were black as well so all of the metals kind of match and it just made the space feel a little bit more cohesive as opposed to having a silver mirror a gold bar a bronze toned leg desk and then a silver clothing rack like having your metals kind of matching is a great way to kind of make sure your furniture looks more cohesive and then having your wood tones matching as well and then of course if it comes to painting your furniture pieces maybe keep the paint color or the paint tones similar that way they look a little bit more cohesive as well the last step in finishing a room design is decorating and this is my personal favorite part and something that i do when i'm decorating a space is again go back to my original mood board and pick and choose things i like about those spaces a lot of spaces of course are decorated on pinterest because they want to give you that inspiration and that vibe so from those decorated spaces you can pull direct pieces that you like like let's just say they have a terracotta base there you want to get a terracotta base for your space as well because you're following that kind of design aesthetic of your mood board but if you do want to go on your own route taking your mood board and kind of consolidating a color palette that you really like from that mood board and just going out and purchasing decor that has that same color palette is a great way to add interest but when you do go out and purchase decorations don't only consider purchasing decorations in your color palette also consider purchasing decorations that have more of a natural element to them i think mixing decor that has a natural vibe such as metal decor, wood decor, marble decor, mixed with your color palette decor is a great way to kind of mesh it and make it look like a thought out and well-designed space. All right, guys. So that was kind of my video for today. I feel like I just jumbled off the most information ever and I'm actually scared for myself when it comes to editing this video because I just want to make it as clear and concise and cohesive and like simple as possible. So I hope that this might have helped any of you guys if you have struggled with designing a room or this maybe creates like a 
little bit of an instruction manual or like a to-go tips kind of a vibe to creating your next space in your home or apartment to make it just feel like something personalized and something that you truly want to live in and you that you love. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed. And if you were not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new videos on home decor and DIY every single week here on the channel. And you can also follow me over on Instagram at Lone Fox Home, where I post more behind the scenes type stuff over there. Anyways, guys, I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day. Stay safe, everybody. And I will catch you all in my next video. Bye, guys.